Tazio Pacmo. First question is that is the most beautiful name. Where did it come from? Oh. Tazio. <laughs> um, it comes from the movie uh, Death in Venice and the, the book and then the movie Death in Venice by uh, Visconti. Yeah, it's terrific. Yeah. Um, also, you're a young photographer, mm -hmm. artist, mm -hmm. but you seem to paint with the camera. When, how did this technique start? Is it a new technique or? Well, um, it's, well, this is a, I'm coming to this slowly, but surely maybe. Uh, I started with more classic photography and uh, more and more I'm interested in movements and uh, movements uh, taken by the camera and uh, when it's still like a still photography and uh, so but I, I began with uh, several series uh, before to come to this because this is very a new work I'm developing I'm not exactly sure of the size and of the technique and everything and uh, at the same time I'm uh, leaving a little bit uh, photo classic photography techniques for uh, like printing, printing on this canvas, which is quite a new new technique, at least here. I don't know. The, the tech, is it the technique new or is the, uh, the canvas, the paper? Well, the new? fact to print is quite new. Before you have a classic uh, photographic paper, which I like very much. But I wanted to to leave a little bit, and because I'm very interesting interested in painting, but I'm not a painter, so it's also a way to be in between photography and painting to use a camera, because this is my my tool. I mean, I'm every day with. But uh, but finally, at the end, the image is uh, printed on canvas. And canvas is like like for a paint, for a classic painting. So uh, I like to be to move to to painting in that way. Does the canvas soften the image a little bit? Yeah, it's very uh, matte, so it does not reflect anything like like here. So you get deeper inside the image, I think, and it's uh, well. First of all, I was like this, a little far, far from the subject. And uh, the glossy paper also make like, like a window, like a distance between me and, uh, and the subject. And here uh, I'm starting <laughs> to be closer to the subject, to the people I'm photographing. And also with this made texture, uh, I get closer, I think. But also, it seems to give a dimension. It almost is like a two or a three-dimensional object, with a way. And is it just the ang the angle of your camera? Well, I don't know. At the same time, it's very it's very strict. I think. I mean, lines are horizontal, vertical, or perfectly oblique, and people are very straight. And uh, I like this. Um, well, in this specific picture, there is a dimension because of this bridge. But usually I like uh, to have uh, very f flat things. And uh, like here, well, there is a perspective, but not so much. I mean, you don't... Also, the images that we're looking at here on the, on the wall, do you always work with just a single individual in a picture? Uh, in that series, yeah. I just, I tried because I wanted to analyze uh, the link between uh, ur urbanism and architecture and people. And I, I, I always feel in the cities this, uh, that um, uh, protection of the city and at the same time oppression of the city. And it's like the one versus the other. And uh, this feeling I, I had to analyze and uh, through these pictures with always one person with a, like a huge city and a small p people. But that, yes, it brings a certain kind of loneliness yeah. to, to the image, a certain melancholia. 
yeah. about uh, not only the distance of, of you from the single person, mm -hmm. but also just the overall feeling that you mentioned, the, 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 the human being, human scale within the enormous yeah. city. But I think there is a lot of uh, loneliness also in these big cities because yes. you have many people, like here in China, it's difficult to have one person. You said, you talked, used the term series. You work in a series? Yeah, I mean, it, well, uh, when you work, I mean, for me, it's like I'm thinking, I'm analyzing something, so I'm making many pictures of the same subjects. For example, this series today has around 50, 50 pictures, and I have another one uh, uh, here, well, I, pictures I take in the trains, when I am in the train, so when peop things are moving, so there is a lot of movement, movement and blur, blur parts. And uh, this is a new one, which is a kind of convergence of the two previous ones. It means there is a lot of mo movements, and uh, it's also about people. And here it's underground; it's uh, in a very cold light, and uh, a lot, a lot of kind of loneliness also. And it's underground, so under I mean, it's not human; it's a uh, it's uh, not natural light, and it's not a natural place, it's underground, but human is here. But also, the figure is very mysterious because you don't really see the figure. I mean, there's no features. No. Part of the body is missing in a way, it's, it's all sort kind of, of blurred ghosts. and blended. I mean, I think yeah. we become like kind of ghosts. Yeah. I mean, we live underground and we live with electric light, and uh, I w we wonder, is, is is it really human people or not? I don't know. The earlier work seems to move from the figurative, and this is much more abstract. Yeah. Well, I, I, it's, it's more abstract, and it's more painting also. And, uh, well, there is a, a well-known uh, painting of Garth Richter in Chicago, the woman descending the staircase. And it was a big shock to me. I mean, this, I, mean, I like Richter, and this specific painting was something incredible so and I, I was here uh, six months ago so maybe it's it's a big influence I think but abstract is very interesting because I think day by day I remove elements I mean I remove some details and I come here and uh, I try to keep only the main main subject the main thing I want to talk about so abstraction is uh, I think somewhere I'm going to. Does each series you do, like you said, that's China. Yeah. Do, you've traveled all over the world for these series. Is for, each series for this one, I, tr I traveled quite a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to China, I went to the US, I, I traveled in Europe, yeah. I needed to, I, I have some kind of uh, photographic territories. So I have the train for one series. I have uh, uh, foreign countries for, for another one because in Paris you don't find this kind of big sky skyscrapers and uh, it's not adapted to this subject. So Paris has always been my um, private life, let's say, <laughs> and uh, my working area is somewhere else. But now I'm starting to work in Paris with this. Is but this, this is not the first time you've worked in Paris. No, but uh, but but this this series was not very developed in in Paris. A little bit, a few a few images in La Défense, which is a the business center of Paris. But inside Paris is like like romantic and uh, with nice buildings, and it's it's not this exactly. What countries have you worked in? Previously, you mean? Oh. Uh, I've, I've been working in, in Asia, in, in Bangkok, uh, in my previous uh, life, let's say, uh, as an engineer. Uh, and uh, it was a great, great experience to live in Asia. And I, I love Asia. And, um, and I, actually, it was the place where uh, big cities became something important to me. I, I have been to New York before. and. Uh, it, New York is very impressive, extra, but um, 
Bangkok is, is impressive plus it's, it's Asia and uh, it was my first time in Asia and it was uh, something different. What was it about the series in Bangkok that, that uh, I, I captured your imagination? Well, I didn't start this series in Bangkok, uh, uh, but it was uh, a place where uh, everything was different. So I discovered these big cities and this is where I started to think, well, humanity is, is weird. I mean, to, to build these big skyscrapers because we have a lot of space, but we prefer to, to grow, uh, to, to build high and uh, and I started uh, observing people walking in the streets uh, loneliness and uh, craziness and uh, people uh, running everywhere to work and uh, never looking around and uh, this is something I'm trying to, to show in these pictures that that we, we always walk everywhere and never look, looking around and uh, and we don't take time to look around. And, I'm, and, and me, I'm here, I'm taking pictures, but I'm aside, aside this, this world. And uh, I, I feel aside this world and because I'm not inside anymore. I'm not uh, in a business anymore. So I'm outside this. I'm looking at it. And uh, I want to just to, to show uh, people what, what they are doing, uh, what they are and uh, what we are, because I'm inside at the end, but... A little while ago, you mentioned that you were in Bangkok or in, the, in Asia as an engineer. Yeah. Now, how did you get from being an engineer yeah. to being an artist? Well, it was not an easy choice, but... Um, well, I, I studied engineering, and uh, this was very interesting actually because I learned a lot of mathematics and physics and about movement especially uh, and um, I worked on as, as an engineer and uh, but du during my studies I made a lot of of pictures actually <laughs> more than studying maybe so it was more of a continuum Sorry? from engineering it was more of a continuum from engineering to the arts you were always an artist, even when you were an engineer? Mm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I, I've always wanted to be, but I didn't know it. So I, I, I went on with uh, studying engineering, and I, 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 when I finished the studies, I said, OK, let's, let's try. I mean, let's try to be an engineer. It was interesting, and uh, this led me to Bangkok, which was, which was very nice and interesting. And I came back to France after one and a half year in, uh, in Asia. And uh, I started working in uh, uh, um, computers, I mean, creating websites, etc., which was nice. But one day I thought, well, let's try something else. I mean, this is not what I want to do all my life, so let's try something else. But Tazio, it sounds like a natural evolution, because I've always heard that many scientists think of themselves as artists. So there seems to be a very close correlation between science and, quote, the arts. Oh, yeah. Or maybe we use science in arts. Maybe it's the opposite. I don't know. Because when I was an engineer, what I created, I didn't feel like being an artist. It's very, it's very not boring, but very straight and, uh, yeah, very serious. So, uh, but now, I mean, what I did before uh, is useful to me today. I mean, when I, s I, I went to uh, this exhibition of Jules uh, Marais, like Muybridge, uh, he's a French uh, scientist and artist, and it was very interesting to me to see these pictures. Were there other early influences? You mentioned Gerhard Richter uh, yeah. being so startling for you. And were there other early influences when you were uh, in Yeah, I think that there was one a very um, important exhibition and maybe one, one image actually. Uh, uh, it was an exhibition, uh, I don't know exactly when, in the 90s uh, of about Suzanne Lafon, a French photographer. And it, there was one picture named the, La Chute, The Fall. 
and uh, it's uh, a picture, it's a portrait of a black and white, in black and white of a guy, but it's reversed. It means that the head is down and the feet are up. And this guy is, is, is uh, head bended like this, and uh, he's, he seems to suffer a lot. And uh, I don't know, I, w I was a teenager, I saw this, and it was something important. So Suzanne Lafon is, is very important. And, uh, and also about movements, there is Marais, and also uh, Jacques-Henri Lartigue, he's a French also, he's a, he, he, he took pictures all his life about his family and uh, a lot of that movement. So he made some pictures of uh, um, cars running very fast, but with the picture is still this, this car, uh, lights, uh, it's about movement, it's very, very nice. Mm -hmm. What series are, are in your mind, the new series? Well, this is a, a new one, so it's less than one year. So I, I have only a few pictures and I'm making some, some tests to decide on the sizes. And um, I think I'm, I'm here today. Uh, it's about human, humanity and uh, loneliness, maybe. You mentioned the light, daylight in the earlier series, and with this series, it's artificial light. Yeah. Um, you react to the color of light in different cities. You mentioned going around the world. Yeah. The, the light in the desert. Uh, you you play with that as a as a, a vital component when you well, compose. Well, I it. I don't really play with it. I think I'm using it. I mean, I I'm using it as it is. I as I found find it. Uh, I think light is for sure important for colors like extra, but. Uh, I like to use it as I f find it when where I am. I'm not really choosing. I mean, for this picture, for example, I didn't wait for for the sun or whatever. Uh, and here, for for sure, underground is always the same. So it's more flat, uh, but it's uh, it's more cold too. It's very cold this light in in the metro. And, uh, but for sure, it is uh, an important part of the and work. And that coldness, does that heighten the loneliness as well? Yeah, also. Yeah, sure. I feel that we are lonely, I mean, in that big world, and uh, we don't take time to stop and to look around and to admire things, and uh, especially in, when you go to business places, business centers in big cities, people running everywhere, and uh, I, I think I want to, uh, it's not a big message, but I want to tell people, look how lon lonely you are. Have you exhibited the, the works for a long time? Uh, I, I've uh, exhibited this, this series and the train series uh, a few months ago in an exhibition I organized with some other artists. The idea was to have different media, so there was one photographer, one sculptor, one painter extra. We were 10 artists. It was in a big empty flat in Paris. It was very nice. Uh, this is a way to, to show my work these days. And uh, I should have normally an exhibition in next September uh, in Paris, uh, but it's not all set up yet, so. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Tazio, very, very thank much. Thank you for coming to Paris. <laughs> well, <laughs> any time. <laughs> but also, lots of luck. I think it will, okay. it will be very successful. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. More and more, I'm interested in movements and uh, movements uh, taken by the camera and uh, when it's still like a still photography and uh, so but I, I began with uh, several series uh, before to come to this because this is very a new work I'm developing I'm not exactly sure of the size and of the technique and everything. Mm -hmm. But you seem to paint with the camera when how did this technique start? Is it a new technique or? Well, um, it's, well, this is a, I'm coming to this slowly, but surely maybe. Uh, I started with more classic photography 
and uh, and uh, at the same time I'm uh, leaving a little bit uh, photo classic photography techniques for uh, like printing printing on this canvas which is quite a new new technique at least here I don't know the the tech is it the technique new or is the uh, the canvas the paper well the near. fact to print is quite new before you have a classic uh, photographic paper which I like very much but I wanted to to leave a little bit and because I'm very interesting interested in painting but I'm not a painter so it's also a way to be in between photography and painting to use a camera because this is my my tool Tazio Pacmo first question is that is the most beautiful name where did it come from oh. Tazio <laughs> Um, it comes from the movie uh, Death in Venice and the, the book and then the movie Death in Venice by uh, Visconti. Yeah, it's terrific. Yeah. Um, also, you're a young photographer, mm -hmm. artist. 